Hi, it's Jan Beta and I'm back on YouTube on screen here. I'm really sorry about the break I had to take. Um, but as you can maybe see, this is the old desk. Um, I yeah put it together like it was. Um, except for I have another desk that's over there and I'm going to show you in another video um, that is dedicated to um, a permanent um, Commodore 64 setup and um, yeah maybe I don't know yet uh, there's an Amiga setup at the moment and um, there, there's probably going to be a variety of systems over the next couple of weeks uh, but there's a dedicated retro computer table um, so yeah, I had to move to a new flat, this is the new flat, this is the new lab, this is the new desk in the new lab. I am the old Jan Bieter and um, yeah, I hope, hopefully I will um, return to the regular schedule of making at least one video a week. Uh, so I have, to, I have to catch up with um, a lot of comments and stuff like that on YouTube and uh, elsewhere. I don't know if I can manage to catch up with all the comments. I was offline for some time. I had to take a break. Um, because physically and psychologically, I was quite um, yeah. I was I was quite a wreck. Now I'm pretty much uh, back to normal. I think uh, the overall situation has changed a lot. My personal life has changed a lot, but um, I'm going to be back to making videos and today. I have this uh, wonderful Commodore 64 that you have seen in uh, a video before. I don't remember if it was the last one, uh, probably the one before the last one before that. <laughs> so three videos back or so we took uh, this thing apart. It had the wrong version of the VIC um, graphics chip in it. Um, and it was it was a pretty pretty easy fix because I just replaced the chip with the correct one and I didn't do anything else to this. So this is a pretty much stock Commodore 64C uh, except for somebody uh, put the brown keyboard in as opposed to the white keyboard that this normally has from factory. Um, so today I'm going to show you something that's in this little uh, ESD safe enclosure and what it is is this let's take a close-up so we're going to take a look at this little fella which is a Tapuino Reloaded version 0.3 which was done by Groovy Drifter J Gilcas and Edu Arana and Edu uh, donated this to me um, under the premise that I show it in, in a video and yeah I usually don't do advertising uh, but this is a small-scale operation of a group of hobbyists who um, did this and uh, I'm going to show this to you and you can buy these actually um, at Arananet um, I'm gonna link that in below uh, that's Edu's website. So thank you for donating this. I'm going to take a look at this. What it is, is... Uh, yeah. So some of you who are familiar with the Commodore 64 probably remember these things uh, called Data Z in this case. And um, you're using this to load programs uh, from or save, load and pro save programs to and from uh, cassette tapes which are regular um, cassette tapes that you would also use in your um, hi-fi system. Um, apparently nearly nobody except for a small group of nerds uh, does that, I think. Uh, it has yeah, hi-fi tape recordings, which is not very hi-fi at all because tape is very... it's, it's pretty lo-fi. Um, but it has some benefits uh, like um, saturation and stuff like that and it makes sounds um, it makes music sound warmer and stuff like that so there is a, is a little um, group of people who still listen to music from tape 
it is pretty inconvenient compared to anything else. So, uh, it is especially inconvenient and pretty slow. Uh, and yeah, you have to... The tapes take, or take up a lot of space and... Um, it's a pretty ancient medium overall. So, um, the Tapuino comes in. The Tapuino is uh, basically it's, it's, it's an open source hardware. I'm gonna link in um, the site where you can download everything and uh, look at um, schematics and stuff like that for these things. This is a pretty nice version with a little display and stuff like that. It basically is um, a microprocessor, um, an Atmo. Uh, 80 mega 32.8 I think I can barely read it um, uh, an Arduino that uh, emulates a data Z then you can put in a little SD card in this case micro SD uh, with tape files that you would use in an emulator and then you connect this to a real Commodore 64 or one of the um, remakes that uh, have a data Z connector still and you can load things off the little files um, the Commodore 64 things or another Commodore computer uh, that has a data Z board um, in this case it doesn't matter because it's compatible with um, all the uh, computers which makes this interesting if you also have a big 20 or maybe a pet could connect this to those as well so um, what it does is emulate the data set and uh, you can load tape files from SD card which is pretty nifty and yeah I want to try this I have to look for an SD card I don't know if I have a micro SD but uh, eventually I will find one and then I'll put some tape files on there and we're gonna try this thing out. Shall we? But first, the most important thing, let's remove this protective film here. Ah, beautiful display. So I'm back and I found this teeny tiny uh, 32 gigabytes. <laughs> Um, which is pretty much uh, very much over the top for this purpose because tape files are really really tiny. Um, this little micro SD card and I'm going to put this in here. Yeah, and it clicks in nicely. And then we're going to put this uh, Tapu Ino Reloaded into the Commodore 64, shall we? So and it should go into the tape cassette here like so which fits nicely um, should also fit on the old bread bin case models uh, there's plenty of space here so so by the way I wanted to make a video um, a lot earlier uh, more than a week earlier but then I got the flu and I got um, such a sore throat um, that I could barely talk so it was uh, I was not in the shape to make videos. I, it might still sound a little odd, uh, but uh, that's just, I, I'm fine. It's just the remnants. So let's turn this on and see what this uh, little display does, or if it explodes or anything. Let's see. So that's up, which is a good thing. And it has a teeny tiny little display there. So there's this teeny tiny little display. and. Uh, I think it's an OLED uh, screen or something like that. Not too familiar with all these um, different techniques. Wow, it makes a nice springy sound. Um, you shouldn't do that, probably, but uh, it still works. So I can select the mode, select file, and it says invalid. Recorded files. There, ghosts and goblins. I, did, I put some tape files on there. And it tells me the file names. So, put some of my favorite things on there. Let's uh, select Ghosts and Goblins, I guess. So, I select the tape. And I should put, I think I should just press um, Shift Run Stop. So, 
pressing shift and run stop. And sure enough, it behaves like, and it shows me the progress here, it's at 4% loaded. And it found ghost goblins, so that's, um, it's behaving just like a data Z tape. <laughs> that's pretty nice. So now, okay, now there's our um, Nova load, which is the particular fast loader that this uses. I should turn on the sound, I guess. Because I think it makes a sound as well. So this is just like uh, the regular data set. I love, I just love these um, loading screens and oh, yeah, it's pretty nice to have um, to be able to quickly, or quickly <laughs> in this case, it's the speed of a usual data set, but um, you can put files on there if you want to test the tape version of a game and oh, put the game on there and it should just load um, like from the original dataset. And actually I made my own original dataset from this um, tape file that I I recorded it onto tape and um, loaded it into the Commodore 64 um, from the tape I made with the regular dataset and it worked just fine and it behaved just like this the same speed and stuff like that. So I should probably um, make a little uh, edit here because it's barely over 50% and it just takes a while. So I'm gonna get a cup of tea, I guess. <laughs> By the way, these um, tapuinos um, you can build yourself. That's various um, tutorials on how to do it. And um, basically it's, it's a very basic concept of uh, an Arduino that has certain software running and um, emulates a data set basically and you just have to put a connector on there and um, yeah this is pretty pretty sophisticated with the little display and all the buttons and the LED that's working nicely and um, it's, it has a nice form factor um, you can put it in there and it stands up and you can see the display it's pretty nicely um, thought out and looks beautiful and I think there's also a case um, for it available um, from the site I link, I will link in the description. So we are at 94%, so it's not, it's not gonna take long now, hopefully. <laughs> it's still gonna take long because it's just, uh, there was other times, I guess. The loading times were different too. So there we should. Yeah. And as you can probably hear, there we are. That's Ghosts and Goblins loaded from a virtual tape. That's pretty nice. I just love this. It's a bit of a pity I, I forgot to connect the joystick, so I can't play it at all. But uh, I suck at it anyway, so um, I spare you the side of me playing Ghosts and Goblins. Let's have a look at the other functions the um, Tapuino has. Okay, here we are. Tapuinos loading up. So we can also put it into record mode so that we can uh, save stuff. And we have options, so let's choose options. Machine video invert key speed ticker speed ticker old record what does that mean machine ah I can select different machines can select the Vic and the Commodore 16 and the Commodore 64 for the um, Commodore 16 you need an adapter because they don't have the same. Uh, tape connector but that should work just fine because it's the same it's the same connections on the connector but it's a different connector they are using a mini din thingo 
So, okay, machine thing. Um, oh. Video. What does the video mean? Ah, I can choose PAL or NTSC video, obviously. This is a PAL machine and it was set on PAL, I guess. Auto finalize is pretty much um, for recording tapes, probably. Yeah, same with this. Tick or hold? What does that mean? I can, can change the timings of the ticker, whatever the ticker is, the ticker speed. Can increase the speed, so to 500. Okay. This is probably. Can invert tape files as well, which is necessary for some. Uh, tape files that were recorded with different old-school software, I guess. The key speed is probably the speed these keys react. Uh, probably so. Yeah, this is pretty nice. Um, so it has quite a lot of sophisticated little functions there and you can set it to your machine nicely. You should try Hexenküche, which is, um, I showed this before, uh, it is the German version of Cauldron. And I think, for some reason I copied site B on here, but it should be the same. So I'm going to select that, there we are. Press shift and run stop, and it should load. And sure enough, oh, I, it's Hexenküche 2, so it's Cauldron 2. Actually, I uh, confused the files there, but it works fine, it seems, so that's pretty nice. And I still haven't connected the joystick, so yeah. And there we are. I smell like it. That is Hexenküche 2. Der Kürbis schlägt zurück. The cauldron strikes back is the um, no, no, the pumpkin strikes back, of course, the cauldron can't strike that much. Yeah, you get the point. So that's the uh, Tapu Inu Reloaded that Edu sent me. Thank you very much for this, sir. Um, I'm looking forward to playing with this more and I'm going to use this regularly, I guess, because uh, it's a very nifty little device that comes in nice form factor and uh, I didn't have a Tapu Inu and yeah this comes in very handy so thanks a lot you other people check out Edu's site I'll link that in the description and you can buy these there and um, yeah thanks very much for watching hope to be on here soon hope you are going to be on youtube with me again and uh, visit my channel and subscribe if you haven't done so already if you want to support me you can consider becoming a patron there's going to be special behind the scenes videos uh, pretty soon uh, on my patreon channel i'm going to link that in the corner there so check that out um Stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you all soon. Thank you so much for sticking through my um, hibernation phase. Uh, yeah. I hope I'm going to be back to my regular schedule from now on. So there's a lot of awesome stuff coming up that uh, yeah, I'm going to show you then. So stay tuned. I'm happy to be back. Uh, Thank you all so much. I'm Jan Peter. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.